Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be removing the rear brake caliper from the SV Thal and uh, giving it a bit of a rebuild. Now, um, I've been meaning that's one of the jobs, many jobs that I've uh, been meaning to do on this bike for quite some time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take the caliper off, give it a rebuild. I won't be fitting it back onto the bike in this video because um, I, I need to fit a new uh, disc to this wheel. The wheel needs powder coating. There's a lot of things that need doing. Um, new wheel bearings, all that good stuff. Um, so I won't be refitting it, but we're going to do a rebuild. Now, um, those of you that have been following this um, will remember I did some braided lines um, and, and all that sort of stuff. So the brake fluid in here is fairly new, but it, it's, it's what it is. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. So, uh, yeah, um, the last video I think I did with this was the stator magnet. Um, as you can see, the, the clutch cover is currently off the bike. Uh, I, in, I intend to uh, do a video about clutch chudder um, and, uh, you know, fixing that problem. Um, but that's on the to-do list. Obviously, I've got quite a few things, quite a few projects on the go at the same time. Anyway, let's uh, let's dig into it and get this caliper off. Okay, before we start, um, this little cap here, the uh, the pad retaining pit, um, this little cap here, this with a flat head um, on it is basically a little cover. Uh, underneath that there is an Allen pin, uh, um, a pin with a, an Allen head in it. Um, whilst this is on the bike, I'm, I'm, I've uh, cracked that off just to make sure that it would actually come undone because there can be a pig uh, and it's a lot easier while it's on the bike. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to just undo undo the uh, the banjo for the brake fluid and obviously I'm going to lose a fair bit of fluid here so what I've done is got my little jar to capture it all um, and that way we're not going to have brake fluid dripping everywhere so what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow this all to drain out and then we'll look at uh, getting the caliper off. Right, what I've done, um, I have just popped a, um, a rubber glove over the uh, end of the hose with a little tie wrap and any uh, dripping fluid will just be captured in there and I can dispose of that later on. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the caliper from the bike. Oh, that was a bit tight. That's one. That's a 14 mil. The back one is 12. Okay. Someone's been a bit slap happy with the old copper slip. Now we can remove, oh, obviously we've dripped a bit of brake fluid there, I'll go back and clean up in a minute. Now um, the uh, caliper itself, the, the, the front of the rear caliper, the bracket itself incorporates the sliding portions with the little stainless steel, there it is, the little stainless steel um, plate which the uh, which the 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 pads fit into so obviously we need to uh clean all this up give all this a good clean um as well as part of the process in here we've got uh, a little um a little rubber bung which is all part of the kit um and yeah all of this needs a good clean up before we uh, before we put it back together so what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, clean up a little bit of spilled brake fluid and then what we'll do we'll take the um we will take the caliper 
over to the bench and strip it down. Okay, so here we are at the bench. Now with the, uh, the caliper, I've put a bit of paper down because this is gonna get messy because I'll no doubt lose a bit of brake fluid out of this caliper uh, during this process. So what I've got here is a rebuild kit for this caliper from All Balls Racing. Uh, All Balls Racing, the little sticker. Uh, these are on, uh, this company's on eBay um, and they make all sorts of kind of things, All Balls Racing, make bearings, uh, seal kits, all that good stuff. Uh, I've used them a few times, never had any dramas up to, um, as of yet, so, um, Obviously, I can rate them. Uh, yeah, in this kit, there's quite all, everything you need basically to replace on the caliper. There's a new uh, pad pin, new bleed uh, nipple valve, the cover for that valve, all the rubber components, new uh, copper washers. There's even the little the little cap here that when it gets mangled, um, when you try and take it out, there's a new one of those. And we've also got a new set of double uh, sintered EBC pads uh, for this caliper now. I've raved on about EBC scented pads and how much I like them uh, in the past. I won't dwell on that too much. But what I'll do, I'll leave links to all of this stuff in the description so you can go check them out if you want to. Anyway, uh, let's the waffle, let's get on with the job. Right, so I'll take the banjo bolt out. And there's the two, the two old washers. Um, right, as I said earlier, I have actually loosened this off once already just to make sure I can get it out. And there we go. Now, um, with regards to copper slip and brakes, I don't, tend to, I don't put any on the pads like um, some do, but what I do like to do is put a little bit around this. Ooh. I'll grab it. Ugh. What I do like to do is put a little bit around this, um, just to, have I got a hole in my hand? Ugh. Yeah, a little bit around this, just so that it helps it come out and um, it doesn't seize in. Um, tends to be the way ahead, it tends to work for me. Anyway, right, let's try not to drop anything else and uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is attempt to remove the pad pin. Uh, and that actually came out pretty easily, uh, surprisingly. Um, so, just a six mil Allen. Six mil, no, it's four mil, I think. Five mil, five mil. Yeah, wind that out. There's the old one. There's the old pads. Um, they're not terrible. Uh, the the pistons, the piston side seems to have a little bit more meat on it than the uh, than the non-piston side as it goes, which is a bit a bit odd. But anyway, they can uh, all go to one side. Don't need that anymore um, because there's a new one in the kit. Right. Okay. So. That was the bolt. We'll clean these up shortly. And we've got some rubber components. So that little rubber bush, there's a new one of those in the kit. And there's a new one of these as well. So inside here, we've got like a little slide bush and that'll pop out. All right, we don't get a new one of them in the kit, so we need to retain that. Now this will just fold in on itself and it will push out and there we go new one of them in the kit right okay so next we'll take the cap off that and we'll remove the bleed nipple and that's that we've got a new one of them as well Right, what we're going to do next is we are going to remove the piston. Now, um, there's various different ways of doing this. Um, you can use, uh, obviously, you can pump it out while it's on the, this copper slip on it's all over the place. Bloody copper slip. Right. Um, yeah, you can use um, the uh, the hydraulic pressure of the, from the from the line to push it out, or you can. Um, uh, use compressed air. There's, you know, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to. Uh, what I might actually do is use compressed air to get this one out, um, just to uh, just to be a little bit different for for a change. Um, in which case, I will put in the bleed nipple, and I can use the banjo hole to blow air in. Okay, so what I've done, I've refitted the bleed nipple just to uh, cap that off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blast uh, compressed air in here um, with the uh, obvious aim of pushing out the piston. So, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to face it down towards the bench so that uh, it doesn't fire into my face and then just give it a blast, like so. And there we go. Simple as that. That's so easy, isn't it? Um, so there we are. There's the piston and looking at it, it's pretty good near. There's a little bit of corrosion, but nothing I won't clean off, I don't think. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all good. Okay, so what we'll do next is uh, look at the seals. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the, uh, the seals, but first what I'll do, I'll remove that spring, give that a clean up in a minute, and we can now remove the old bleed nipple again. And there we go. That's that, right. So seals, you've got two seals in here. You've got a dust seal right at the front and then the oil seal will sit at the back. Probably not really showing up on the camera very well, but that is the dust seal. And that there is the oil seal. The dust seal is a lot thinner than the oil seal. So to get them out, what we'll do is just, I'll just pry them out with a little scriber. There's the dust seal. As you can see, it's quite thin. There is like a slight profile lip on the inside of it. Um, which you don't get on the oil seal and then the oil seal is at the back and there it is and as you can see it's a lot thicker and it's completely plain it's com there's no ridging whatsoever on it at all uh, these don't look terrible to be perfectly honest but we're rebuilding it anyway so um, they can go in the bin right that is the caliper casting completely stripped of all of its components. All we need to do now is give this a, a darn good cleanup. So what I'll do, I'll fire it through the parts washer, um, give it a good, uh, which will give it a good wash, um, clean up all the other components that we're uh, that we're retaining, and then I'll bring you back in when we're ready to uh, put it back together. Right then, that is everything nice and clean. The uh, the piston came up uh, pretty well. Um, there's a couple of little pit marks in it. Um, but nothing too, nothing too drastic, and certainly nothing that's um, going to be in the sweep of the uh, the seal anyway. So that should be fine. Um, next time I come to rebuilding this caliper, it may well need a new one, but that's going to be way down the line yet. Yeah, anyway, um, everything else is nice and clean. Um, what we need to do now is look at fitting the uh, fitting the seals. So if we open up the little kit, take the sticker out, put that one side. Right in here, they give you a little um, a little pot of red rubber grease um, I've got a whole tin of it here um, it is what it is um, it's nice of them to include it because not everybody's got a tin um, this is the uh, the slide pin and the little cap that I was telling you about that's just there um, and then we've got the rubber components here let's get them all out of the bag there we are right Leave them to one side for the moment, we don't need them just yet. So here's the oil seal and here is the dust seal. As I said before, you can you can see there's a little ridge on the inside of the on the inside of the dust seal. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is we're going to fit the seals. Now I'm gonna lube them up with plenty of red rubber grease. Now um, give it a good coat, but don't go absolutely crazy with it. It doesn't need to be dripping in the stuff that's the uh, oil seal and here's the dust seal okay right let me wipe my hands off on my trousers okay so what we're going to do simply fit the seal into the slot it from whence the old one came and being a bit slimy, it'll like to wiggle around all over the place. But it will go in eventually. And there we are, it's in. Right, um, quick talk about um, red rubber grease and brake fluid and stuff like that. Now, some people like to just lube them up with brake fluid, get them in, uh, that's fine, do what you want. Um, it's entirely up to you on your bike. I prefer not to because I don't want brake fluid sat behind the seal um, because obviously it's hygroscopic as everybody's aware and brake fluid sat behind the seal absorbing water is not going to do you much good 
um, obviously it'll attract the water and it'll just sit behind the seal and corrode, corrode the casting. These are only made of aluminium and it'll just go powdery. Um, and you don't want that, do you? Right, so there's the uh, oil seal and the dust seal fitted. Uh, all in position and all good. Right, now what we'll do, get the, uh, get the piston, give it ever such a light, ever such a light coat of grease. Take the cast in and pop her in. Uh, giving it a little wiggle and a little twist if necessary. Um, until it gently slides in, just like so. Now, uh, what I won't do is I won't 100% bottom it out at the back of the casting, um, because that will allow the fluid to get behind the piston. Uh, one, one, I've actually had it before, I can't even remember what bike it was on, but I did have um, a caliper that I couldn't for the life of me bleed up. And it's because I had pushed the piston all the way back in. And as I was um, pressurizing the system, all that was happening was the fluid was pressurizing around the outside of the piston and not behind it so it wouldn't push the piston out because I hadn't left a gap for it to get in so it's worth bearing in mind it probably depends on the caliper that particular one was probably just prone to that kind of problem um, this you may not have any problem with but um, I just do it as a matter of course now um, just leave it uh, leave it ever so slightly sticking out okay so that is the piston refitted now what we need to do is move on to fitting all the other components Okay, another little dab of red rubber grease on the boot and push that through its opening till it pops out the other side, just like so. And yeah, there we go. Right, now we need to fit this, and again, the same again, a bit over overzealous with the with the rubber grease there. Simply give it a little a little coat and then pop it through. This is a bit of a pain this one, especially when your fingers are covered in grease. slide it all the way through and then back again so with that it goes into its little there we are look, there we go seeing its little recesses and that is sliding absolutely lovely there we go right what I'll do clean the fingers up before we move on to the next part get the uh, caliper a bit of a wipe because it's Red rubber grease all over it. And there we go. Okay. So, um, obviously that bolt goes through there like that. I'll grease that when we uh, when we install the when we install the caliper back on the bike. But as I said, I'm not going to do that in this video because I've got other things I need to do with the bike. Right, this little bushing here will sit, oops, will be sitting just there. Um, Again, once it's uh, once it's installed correctly, um, this uh, this bolt can go back on and be tightened up. So this is a slide bolt, and again, this will be greased and it engages in a hole on the caliper carrier which is still fitted to the bike um, and then that will fit over the top like so just like that um, I'll give that a bit of a, a bit of a a grease as well yeah and there we go right then so next the little spring plate goes in it goes in that way around and 
it just sits in the bottom there and that's what the pads act upon. Now, close that down, we don't need that at the moment. Just pop the pads open. Now let's make sure we have no grease on my fingers before we do so. So, the uh, pad retaining pin is in this little bag. Let's get all these parts out, and there we go, there it is, right. So, the pad retaining pin is gonna go through there like so, and the pads are gonna sit just like that. And then what I'll do, you can see where the little protrusions on the top of the pads um, meet the, the little spring at the bottom. And all we need to do is just line the pads up, get the pin in place, and spin it down. That is the pads retained in position and obviously this end of the pad will sit in this little stainless little stainless plate which will go onto the caliper carrier on the bike and there we go right the little cover again will go into there and then what i'm going to do as i said before just a little dab a little tiny dab copper slip just around just around the threads on that just to ensure that next time I want to take it out it will actually come out and just give it a little nip up and then wipe it clean There we go. Okay, on the back. We've got the bleed nipples, brand new one. With its brand new dust boot. And then two brand new copper washers for our banjo. And there we go. That is our oops, that is our brake caliper. Absolutely 100% rebuilt and good to go. So that is it. That is ready to reinstall on the bike, bleed up, and um, obviously I would anticipate it will give many, many more miles and years of um, reliable service. Uh, I haven't done the front ones yet. Again, that'll be uh, another video. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the brake disc on the back of the SV does need replacing. It's quite lit, and I, although I haven't measured it, I would imagine it's below the minimum thickness uh, recommended by the manual anyway. Um, the wheel does need um, a, a, a good blast and a powder coat because it's absolutely bogging. And the dirt that is on there simply won't come off with any method that I've tried up to now. It's like it's ingrained in the paint. It's, it's a bit odd, really. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, obviously I'll get that all done at some point. We'll get a new disc on there and then we can reinstall the caliper later. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video, found it useful. Um, please feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, and join me on the socials. Links will be in the description, as will the links to all the parts that I used in this video.
Take care, guys. See you all again for the next one. Bye-bye now.